Good afternoon, Pastor David. And to you, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. That's right. Pastor, I had a question uh, regarding parachurch organizations. Mm -hmm. I wanted, actually, it's not a question. I wanted to get your feedback on that and then ask you, how is that the parachurch organizations affecting the church? Well, the parachurch organization is actually a designation or a name title or whatever you want to call it relating to um, organizations that are not recognized as being a church in, 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 we'll say like ours is a church with a pastor, a board, elders, and a congregation. A parachurch is, is by definition an organization of those who profess Christ who will enter into a ministry relationship with people in the church, the body of Christ, and they come alongside of the church with an intent to, to help the church. So you'll have parachurch organizations that are, are mostly, very often at least, uh, built on missions. You know, they'll have um, a uh, mentality of reaching the world. You know, Campus Crusade for Christ would be a parachurch organization. Um, there are various missionary um, groups that that are not pastored and are not built on elders and leaders so much as having a mission to reach the lost and to try and bring them into relationship with Christ. You'll see that sometimes with like a Billy Graham organization that has crusades. And so they are called the parachurch organization. And so there's been a a bit of a conflict for a number of years. I've been aware of this kind of conflict for, for a good portion of my walk with the Lord. Over 40 years, probably almost 50 years, I've been aware of a, uh, a growing difference between the uh, recognized body of Christ, church, like I said, that is structured according to 1 Timothy 3 or Titus chapter 1, and the parachurch organization, like we'll say like a James Dobson focus on the family that are intended to come alongside of and be a help to the uh, organized body of Christ that has been instituted in its variety of denominational forms. And so what is the problem? Well, part of the problem can be that there are those who are spokesmen of their own parachurch organization. They aren't necessarily part of uh, an established, recognized, and uh, respected group, but they may be somebody who had such a burden for something or other, whether it is human trafficking or stopping uh, poverty in uh, neighborhoods or whatever, and they begin to form their own board. They have a leadership but the leadership may not be and very often is not pastoral. They don't have Bible teaching pastoral leadership so much as an entrepreneur or uh, somebody with a vision, a visionary. And uh, then they actually can impose on the established church because what happens is they begin to, uh, to basically filter members out of churches who are donating their funds and a variety of services to this particular organization. And in doing so, um, never call into question, uh, who are you, um, who do you, who do you uh, answer to? Where's your accountability? It wasn't that long ago that I happened upon a, um, a site where the individual is somebody who leads a parachurch kind of quote-unquote ministry. And the question was asked of him, uh, who is your pastor? Who are you accountable to? Uh, what, what, what church group of elders, mm -hmm. leaders, do you sense that you receive your instructions from and that you have a godly accountability to, that you answer to, that you can be corrected by? Because even now, John, as you know, we're going through the book of Titus, and I wasn't able to go far as far as I wanted to. But Paul has said to Titus to establish a leadership council of elders. Not so much council, but establish elders that are going to minister to the churches in Crete because infiltrators are entering into the churches in Crete and undermining 
the gospel message and effectiveness of the of the gospel amongst the people and so to combat that he says to titus establish these well-qualified men who are capable of of correcting those who are in error and presenting doctrine that shows why these things are important at all because they were they needed to organize because of the infiltration and so today uh, many people don't seem to understand that the the church that jesus established was intended to be built on the apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers in order that they might equip the saints for the work of ministry and that each church or organization should have elders and deacons they should have a a pastoral staff and a, a senior pastor of sorts who is a teaching pastor who is able to help to to direct the um, biblical uh, direction of the church and all but when you have somebody who is not accountable somebody who says oh well on occasion i listen to this person here but in fact if that person he says he listens to was to disagree with him he, because he's parachurch and not under accountability to anybody, he's going to do what he wants anyway. And we see a lot of that. So what at the beginning was intended to be by these parachurch organizations, these come alongside organizations to be of help, um, they developed their own group, their own leadership, their own style, their own quote unquote ministry. And not all of them, not all of them have any accountability. And many of the newer ones I would say uh, the ones I've, I've seen, some of the newer ones don't have any accountability at all. And that's what be, be, creates a problem. So they'll go on, on the social media, and they will pose a question and ask, um, what do you think about this? And then tell these people if their pastor doesn't do what this person is saying, that they're supposed to contact their pastor and let him know. If that's edifying to the body of Christ, I, 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 can't, I can't imagine how, how someone could think that. It, it, it is not edifying to the body of Christ at all. It creates a, uh, a, a, a dissonance. It creates a division. It, it, it actually foments a, a rebellion in many ways because some people can, can believe certain things about the church and, and the pastor and then even though they're wrong, they put it out on social media, and before you know it, everybody is jumping on the bandwagon. I just had that happen just yesterday, where somebody is, I've been in ministry for 48 years. Somebody who's never taught a Bible study, never has led a small group, somebody who has no experience, is calling me into question, saying that my church is filled with sin, and, and, and we have all kinds of evil here, and I need to preach politics because that's what he believes the world needs and john people pile on they bandwagon yeah that's right that's right that's the stuff that that is a sickness in the church because if this person really believed that i'm here he knows where i'm at why don't you come and talk to me i'm outside after the church services i'll talk to whomever no it's easier to hide behind a rock and take a pot shot that's the fruit very often of some of these kinds of organizations that pose questions, get people excited, then, then create an uproar in a church or amongst the people who at one time actually respected their pastor or loved their pastor. And before you know it, they're called into question because somebody who knows nothing is, is making uh, statements that are not verifiable. And you know, with, with that, we make the job of the enemy very easy among the church Absolutely. Uh, instead of edifying and building up and so well thank you pastor that uh that's interesting because you're sharing that i'm thinking false teaching can creep into anybody's church but when there's no accountability there can be uh, there can be false teacher or, or that not having that accountability can open the door even greater for things like that to take place one of the marks of a false teacher you know this, you had to study this in, in school. One of the marks of a false teacher or even a cult leader, no accountability. There's nobody they answer to. It's a very dangerous thing. When there's nobody who can bring correction into your life, you're a very dangerous person. And that is the premier, the primary, alongside of extra biblical literature, that is the primary sign of a false teacher, a lack of accountability a lack of recognition 
by uh, a set of elders who have proven themselves in ministry and have character and a love for the word of God. Look at 1 Timothy 3. Look at Titus chapter 1. You'll see the qualifications there. And yet, we have people who are ignorant of the Bible trying to profess that they are teachers of it. Mm -hmm. And that to me, John, is the direction the church is going in today. It's a very bad direction because we're already prone to doing that which is right in our own eyes. And when we decide that we know better than the pastor, without giving him an opportunity at least to explain his position as to why he could have said or may not even have said what I think he said, that's where the problem is. Remember in Mark chapter 4, 24, and in Luke chapter 8, verse 18, Jesus said, be careful what you hear and be careful how you hear. And a lot of people are not careful about what or how they're hearing. They just have their own opinions, they put them out, and they create problems and divide churches. And they, once they, oops, I was wrong, they just keep moving on. The devastation they've left behind, the hurt that they've left behind, they don't have a conscience for. You know why? They're narcissists. They're narcissists and self-righteous, John. That's the bottom line. Hate me if you want, that's the truth. That's the truth. And people like me who've been in ministry for so many years, I have to... I have to bear with those things because they're too immature, irresponsible, and unlearned to actually see what Scripture says about the things they're talking about. So, yeah, I think that people, you know, need to need to wake up and grow up, and they need to be careful how they hear, and they need to be careful what they sow in the lives of other people. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for this time, and and. Uh... And may we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. May we edify each other. May we continue to build the kingdom. And uh, and Pastor, thank you again for sharing this and and uh, and for giving us insight on this. Sure, why not? We do, <laughs> and we want to invite you a men. Uh, Friday nights our men's gathering. We have that this Friday and Saturday. If you purchased your meal ticket, we will have dinner at six thirty p.m. Uh, if you need a teaching only ticket, you can come the day of Friday and Saturday. And then uh, we look forward to joining us on Sunday. Uh, Pastor, again, thank you so much for your time. And church, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And we will see you soon. Thank you, Pastor. Amen.